I change clothes like my hoes. I love designer and I change my flows like who knows. I want the commas. I'm in the Shout out Levi Ackerman HD8WG because he left a comment on my Zoro vs Yami video which prompted me to make this video. But before we get into that, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because it's gonna be a doozy of a video. So buck your bootstraps, guys. So in that video, I referenced the fact that Yami's Dark Cloak Dimension Slash was the final trump card or ace up his sleeve that would basically make him triumph in a battle over Zoro. And Levi Ackerman HDHWG commented, all annoyed, how does making a slash in a dimension help? And I'll explain that to you right now, guys. This is this is my point exactly. So outside of battles where the swordsmanship and swords play is on par with one another, where Zoro has to battle swordsmen who are greater in skill or at least on level with him, the only way to quantify or scale Zoro's power is through with the materials that he can cut. Now, let me explain. For this explanation, I'll be referencing some of Zoro's most iconic battles and fights to better understand the point I mean about cutting materials is the best way to power scale Zoro. And it's probably be one of the only ways to power scale Zoro. Let's flash back all the way to the Alabasta arc with Zoro versus Mr. One from Baroque Works. His devil fruit ability was the Super Super No Mi fruit, which is basically, I believe, the Steel Steel fruit. I'm sorry, it actually means the Dice Dice fruit. This fruit gives him the ability to turn his whole body into steel blades, making him a very formidable opponent in battle. This battle proved very difficult for Zoro, and he was only able to defeat him after mustering the strength to cut through steel. Him being able to to defeat Daz Bones means that Zoro was able to cut through steel. This is the first instance of Etro Oda showing Zoro's power scaling. He is now strong enough to cut through steel. This is an important reference point because as we go on throughout the show, we understand that Zoro is only getting stronger as he's able to cut through stronger and stronger materials and stronger and stronger opponents. Now let's move forward. Another important battle that I must reference is the battle on in the Water 7 arc versus Kaku, one of CP9's agents. So Kaku was actually a skilled swordsman with with a devil fruit transformation now i didn't really understand the point of him transforming into devil fruit because i feel like <laughs> realistically someone transforming into giraffe would actually mess up their mobility and make them a bigger and easier target but i guess it powered him up you know in anime sometimes things don't need to make sense so his transformation did power him up and gave zoro a little bit of a run for his money but kaku was actually on par with zoro as far as swordsmanship for the most part so the only thing separating them was the fact that kaku could use the iron body technique the technique Tekai technique, which allows CP9 agents to harden their body. Tekai is not to be confused with Busho Shoku Haki, which is armament Haki or the hardening of Haki. Ha this Haki is based on willpower while Tekai is based on physical power. Also, I feel like when Tekai users use Iron Body, they can't move as much. They're not as mobile. It's more like imagine flexing your muscles to avoid damage, like, but it's just ramped up and anime, anime boosted to the point where they're literally taking no damage by just flexing their muscles. Ultimately, this was Zoro's next challenge. He needed to be able to cut through Tekai. And this is another instance of showing he has the power and ability to do this. This is another instance where Etro Oda is giving us scaling and showing how powerful Zoro actually is. Now, this brings us to the Dress Rosa arc and one of Zoro's biggest battles, Zoro versus Pika. Pika's a weirdo, guys. I really didn't like him. His voice threw me off the whole show. I didn't really get the point, but it was just weird, honestly. But this fight was very important because Pika, the will of the Stone Stone, fruit or the Ishi Ishi no Mi as it's called in One Piece is a paramecia fruit which allows the user to absorb all stone and basically assimilate themselves into stone and move throughout different stone bodies. It's a very powerful fruit. So this fight wasn't really challenging for Zoro but it was in the sense that he had to be able to cut through and find Pika wherever he was because he would move his physical body throughout different apparitions of stone. So that made the fight challenging for Zoro but you know what they say about fighting you know bigger targets. The bigger they are the harder they fall and this was the exactly the instance in pika's case because he's so big that he's just a big target it wasn't a hard time battling sometimes smaller and faster opponents are harder to defeat pika was just a big target so i just need to find his actual body wherever he was it's basically like imagine someone fighting a mountain now you guys may say wouldn't daz bones mr one's dice dice fruit be more powerful than pika's stone stone fruit but i have to disagree here because if you think about it just based on surface area and and ratio things like that you can't compare cutting a mountain to cutting a slab of steel yes steel is more refined but a mountain is just bigger so zoro needs to be able to cut through some
something as huge and big as a stone mountain, which is definitely a lot more difficult. And this required the use of Haki. This is actually the first time that we see Zoro use his Haki in the iteration of One Piece. And it's very cool. It's a very cool scene. I think he also does that Nine Worlds Collide thing that I love so much. But don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I don't necessarily remember. This battle truly showed Zoro's true power because Pika was the second in command in the Don Quixote family, which is Dope Flamingo's group of fighters, group of pirates. And Zoro wiped the floor with him. Like, this wasn't really a hard battle for Zoro. It was just more like an annoying battle. Like, Pika wasn't really powerful. They just, their fighting styles didn't really match up well. You can tell when a fighter has a fighting style that gives Zoro a hard time because we're getting into that last with the next battle and the final battle that I'm going to reference. But if you've made it this far, guys, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It super duper helps the channel and I appreciate it so much. The final battle I'm going to reference is, of course, Zoro versus King. King, formerly known as Albert of the Lunarian race. This battle, you know, it's the mo battle that's most fresh in our minds because it just happened in the Land of Wano arc. And I gotta say that this battle really put Zoro to his limits most of all. Like literally he fought death just to survive and come back for the brink of death. Now, not only was King a master swordsman, he also had this unorthodox fighting style paired with the ability to fly and shoot fire that just gave Zoro a really hard time. As stated before, Kings of the Lunarian race granting him a, an immensely resilient body. Queen, his fellow all-star of the three all-stars this is what Kaido calls his three generals i know i got that wrong in my last video queen his fellow all-star has stated that king is a monster that can survive in any natural environment he literally was even put through tests on punk hazard by caesar clown where he literally or maybe it was dr vegapunk i'm not too sure depending on the timeline whoever was owning punk hazard at the time but he went through a lot of vigorous endurance experiments quote unquote and survived all of them and this is in his youth he can survive bullets do him no harm even Zoro cutting him did no harm the hardest take of the whole battle was Zoro was trying to figure out how to damage his armor King was even saying you're not gonna figure it out how to cut me you won't even leave a mark on me that was the hardest thing that was the hardest sell point for Zoro he had to really dig deep in order to cut Queen so we can see that in that instance him being able to cut King I'm sorry is the strongest instance of power scaling for Zoro because that was his most difficult battle by far so what's my point about all this let's bring it full circle Basically, what I'm trying to say is all the feats that Zoro has done so far, none of them compare to slashing a dimension, slashing a literal dimension. That is time and space. You are warping time and space and you are warping reality. That is what Yami Sukehiro is capable of. This is not meant to be a Black Clover video by any means, so I'm not going to go into depth. If you want to look into that, you can watch my other video that I just created about a week ago. But this is my point. Zoro's power scaling is all about what materials can he cut through. This has been like a reoccurring motif, a reoccurring narrative that Etro Oda keeps coming to us with. I think eventually as the show goes on, outside of swords play and who, you know, who does he match up with? Obviously in a battle against someone like Mihawk, it's going to be mostly swords play, but against other characters it's how strong are you? How strong is your armor? And will I be able to cut through? But we all know that when the nine mountains and the eight seas collide, there's nothing that he can't cut. Thank you for tuning into the video, guys. Remember to, as always, find your zen, your final form. I'll see you in the next one, guys. And I change clothes like my hoes. I love designer. And I change my flows like who knows. I want the commas. Ah, many honors.